Happy Independence Day! This could very well be one of our last Independence Days, we'll talk about why, but if there were ever a time for people to wake up, it would be now. And if not now, then I don't think that they ever will. I mean, they are accelerating so quickly in their fight to literally destroy America, and I say that literally, and I don't think that they're even trying to shy away from that anymore, so we'll get into all of that, but yeah, they're moving so quickly and taking advantage of the spineless Republican leadership to cover so much ground that people don't even seem to realize what's going on anymore, like they're just too overwhelmed to even react to it. Like if you told the average American on New Year's Eve a few months ago, hey, in a few months, Mainstream political discussion is going to revolve around defunding the police and getting rid of Mount Rushmore. They probably wouldn't, even I probably would not have believed you. I'm a pretty cynical guy. I probably would have said like, okay, yeah, maybe, you know, I'll believe it when I see it. Because it's not that we didn't know what their plan was. Uh, I, I just don't think that we ever expected it to be as full throttle as it is right now. So we're going to talk a lot about why the left hates the 4th of July, what we can learn from the founding fathers, and uh, if there's hope going forward. So do stay tuned. John Doyle in. Heck off, Kami. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Heck Off, Kami. Things are happening very quickly. And I know that everyone says this before every election, but if we lose in 2020, I seriously, I don't know what we're going to do. I mean, you might remember the timeline I refer to as 12 years. I've said that I think that our window to actually take the country back is about 12 years. And I arrived at that conclusion months ago, assuming that Trump was going to win in 2020. But now even that is contestable. And that's for a lot of reasons. And I know that conservatives like to refer to the silent majority. Uh, we like to bring up how the polls were completely off. And I get that. I really do. I'm right there with you. I'm on your side. Always will be. So please just trust me when I tell you that the polls weren't actually that far off in 2016. But it was the pundits and the media personalities that were completely wrong or perhaps even lying. It was the media who said things like, Hillary Clinton has a 95% chance of winning. Uh, it was the celebrities who mocked people like Ann Coulter for rightfully predicting Trump's victory. But in the days leading up to the election, the RCP average had Trump within the margin of error against Hillary in the battleground states that he needed to win and that he did end up winning to secure the presidency. And I love the guy. He, he's my hero. And it's for that reason that we have to really keep him in line. We have to get him away from the people who don't agree with his agenda and who never did in the first place. We elected him to represent us because he knows what has to be done. And unfortunately, he's largely surrounded himself with the same establishment, GOP, fake conservatives that we elected him to completely obliterate, basically. Um, and also keep in mind that even ignoring the never-ending media attacks, he's had to deal with a pandemic, a tremendous recession, race riots, all things that were probably orchestrated to hurt him and rather successfully at that. But the point is, as far as I can tell, Donald Trump is legitimately our last real shot. And if he trusts his instincts, he can do it. I'll probably do a whole other video uh, on this at some point and everything that's going to be pretty much guaranteed to happen if we lose, which I'm still actually, I'm optimistic about, by the way. And I'll finish with this. Donald Trump's ego is one of his worst and best characteristics. And it's beneficial here because once he realizes that he's losing, especially to an absolute embarrassment of a candidate like Joe Biden, his survival instinct is going to kick in. And I think he'll turn things around and I think he'll be successful at it. I mean, a man is a genius. He's looking at Tucker Carlson this week, breaking all-time records for cable news. Tucker Carlson spending a lot of that time criticizing Trump and the Republicans. And I think that if there were ever something that could snap him back into 2015 mode, it would be that. So there is reason to be optimistic. But I wanted to talk about that really quickly. But it is the 4th of July. It's 1 a.m. So uh, we'll talk about that. Well, actually, I do have some news. Some of you might remember I've always been very skeptical about doing ads in my videos because I didn't want to sell out. But I was thinking recently because doing all this stuff costs money. And the reason YouTube demonetized as conservatives is because they know that, you know, they want us to go broke because then we can't do it anymore. And so I've sort of always like defaulted to that mentality. But then I saw everything that's going on with people pulling ads off Tucker Carlson and all these companies giving hundreds of millions of dollars to Black Lives Matter, aka the Joe Biden campaign. And I realized that for a company to have me advertise their product is now in itself almost a sign of solidarity, given how toxic things are nowadays. It's like they're taking a risk on their end just by having their product seen with me, which is something I appreciate. Uh, and then I also realized that all the people reaching out to me were fans of the channel, like hardworking American business owners. And I was just responding to them like, no thanks, never will I sell out. It's just like, so I'm changing my mind on that because at this point we all have to stick together. So if there's a business owner out there with a good product and who has the courage to associate with someone like me, uh, hell yeah, you know, I'm going to promote that. But I'll never promote something I don't like. Uh, that's just not me. But the reason I mention this is because I got an email recently from an independent video game company and they're like, like, hello, Mr. Doyle, we're fans of your channel. We share your religious beliefs. And I was like, Catholic gamers, my people. So they sent me over a copy of their game and it's called Sporadic Spire. It's this tower defense game. And I'll put some footage up for it. I don't really play video games anymore, but uh, sometimes, you know, you want to do something that's mentally engaging without doing any real work, if that makes sense. So it was actually, it was a lot of fun. Uh, and there's a couple things I really like about it. Firstly, 
all the defense mechanisms have very like specific benefits and abilities. So if you want, you can get really technical with your strategy, or you can do what me and cameraman Badan did, which is just spam the flak turrets and just see what the hell happens. These dudes are, they're gonna get weak. They're gonna get soft. Dude, they're, uh, no, dude, they're not even making it off the platform. No, yeah, what is it? Uh, good turrets create good times. Good times create weak turrets. Oh, weak turrets create, create hard, hard times. times. Hard times create flak turret. Yo, flak excellence. Flak excellence. Let's go. Uh, so there's that, and then it's also very aesthetically pleasing, like the graphics look like a mixture of Minecraft um, with that one part of Undertale where you go through the water area, remember that part? And then there's also two separate currencies within the game, uh, so there are like these investment strategies you can go through to try and earn more of the power-up currency, which is ultimately more important, so it's very epic, I, unironically I spent like four hours playing it. You're there, you're defending the borders from the illegal aliens, you're defending your trad wife from the simps, it's a blast. Also, they're doing a promo where whoever has the longest consecutive game is going to get a gift card worth $100 to wherever they want. So go check it out. Support the boys. Sporadic Spire. It's on Steam for PC. They told me to briefly mention it. Nuh uh. We're monologuing for the boys. Go get it right after you're done watching this video. It's actually, it's a lot of fun. Also, if you're wondering why it's been a while since I've uploaded, it's because I'm working hard putting together a video that I hope will boost everyone's morale with regards to the future of the country. So that should be out next week. But anyways, finally on to the 4th of July. The answer is pretty simple. The question is, why does the left hate the 4th of July? The answer is because they hate America. Really is that simple. The 4th of July is literally a celebration of the day that America was established as an independent nation. It was the day that the Declaration of Independence was adopted by the delegates. It is a celebration of America and resultantly a celebration of American exceptionalism. And the left doesn't believe in that. They don't believe in American exceptionalism. They believe in cultural relativism. They believe that all cultures are equal. None are better than the other. Uh, that would be offensive. But interestingly enough, and this is one of the fundamental contradictions of their ideology, not that they're too concerned about maintaining coherence or consistency, but they believe in cultural relativism in a general sense, but they also exclusively hate on the United States or other Western countries. They would not dare say anything negative about any of the non-Western countries, which are objectively worse than we are. And conversely, they would not dare say anything positive about Western countries, specifically the United States. So in a way, they have their own version of American exceptionalism, which is just that America is exceptionally bad and they hate it. They seriously, they hate America. Think about all the things that define us as a country or that used to define us as a country because they hate all of those things about America. America. There is no characteristic or quality of the traditional American nation that they regard to be good or of any use. It literally doesn't exist. Our history is bad. The men who built the country are bad. The systems that they built are bad. It's all corrupt. It has to be rebuilt from the ground up in alignment with their worldview. And if and when they're successful, or as they continue to be successful, you'll have something as a result, but it's not going to be America. And that's intentional. That's completely by design. The existence of America in itself is a crime to them, which is why they don't leave. They don't want to go somewhere else. They don't want to leave to go somewhere uh, that they believe might be better for them. No, they want to stay here and destroy your country and prevent you from ever taking power again. And once they've consolidated that power, they're going to punish you for speaking out against them. That's what history shows. So at this point, they're being completely transparent with their intentions because it's not even that we can't celebrate America on the 4th of July because of cultural relativism, because we're all equal. At this point, it's simply that we can't even celebrate it because America is evil and it's not worthy of celebration in any capacity. And to suggest otherwise is to be complicit in America's evil, which makes you evil as well. That's an actual belief framework held by the most powerful people in the country and in the world, actually. And they have an army of mindless, self-hating sheep whose vote is just as equal as yours, maybe even more equal now because they've got the mail-in ballots. That's why you can have pride in being a homosexual or being a transgender. Get a whole month for that. Actually, the LGBT calendar makes up about 19% of the entire year, fun fact. That's totally fine. That's actually, that's a celebration. But God forbid that we praise America, which is funny too, because America is a pretty good country to be a gay person in. You're backed by literally every institution in society. Why don't you go to Qatar or Nigeria? Tell them you don't feel as though you are being adequately represented. You don't feel as though they're being inclusive enough. You can have pride in a gay flag, but not the American flag. And here's the real red pill. What's the difference anymore? The gay flag is at this point a better representation of American power than the actual American flag because anywhere in the world where you see a gay flag being flown freely, you know that American power is close by. And in our own country, American power actively gives precedence to the interests of the progressive agenda before the average middle class individual or family because at this point, you can barely display an American flag without having damage done to your property or person and little if anything will be done about it. Whereas if the same occurred due to your display of a pride flag, virtually every institution in the country would come to your aid. That is American power. And that's power that we don't have access to. Middle America does not have access to that power. And so we're getting to a point in this country, if you could even call it that at this point, where to even express joy at the existence of your country, even ignoring the monuments and the heritage that's being destroyed, simply saying, hey, 
America's pretty cool. Let's grab a bomb pop and see if we can get Uncle Pat drunk enough to start being racist. That is unacceptable. Now, if you are not explicitly outspoken in anti-Americanism, then you are part of the problem. You are ignorant. You need to be educated. White silence is violence. And you will have to comply or you will face the mob and Uncle Pat's going to get canceled. And that, you know, it's sort of a joke, but we've also seen videos of people turning their own parents into the mob for simply questioning the Black Lives Matter narrative. It is a cult. That's all there can be. You destroy the family structure, you destroy the church, you destroy the social fabric. What else are people supposed to devote their lives to? This is all they have. That's why they all break down crying about it. These people are not well and they need these causes to be true because it's all they have. That's why they're so emotionally invested. And so today, what I'll be thinking about as I have been for the last six weeks or so, is really what the whole point of the American Revolution was, what they were fighting for, uh, what the Declaration of Independence actually meant. We tend to think about these things in a vacuum, like they just happened, now it's over, now we're here. But if you look at the state of the people who fought in that revolution, they were people who were being exploited by power that needed them more than vice versa. This power instituted a form of government that was no longer conducive to the interests of those people. They put them into debt that they did not ask for and then taxed them to pay it back. And the Constitution even acknowledges a creator and that our rights come from him and they are not to be infringed upon. The left doesn't believe in this. They believe that they know better than God and that they can decide your rights based on their subjective and invariably incorrect interpretation of what is good for society society. The point is that when you think about the types of people that were against the independence of America, or even the people who were against celebrating the 4th of July back then, and then you look at the people that we're dealing with now, there really is no difference fundamentally. I mean, sure, the reasoning has changed, the culture has changed, but the end result is the same and the symptoms are the same. And of course, I have to clarify, I'm talking about politics, not talking about taking up arms. I disavow violence, but the point remains the same, which is that in the course of human events, it is indeed often necessary to dissolve the political bands which have connected groups of people because we are at a point now where we can't even agree on the foundations of the country. We can't even agree on her history. Forget the tax policy. Forget the Department of Transportation. We're talking about the literal foundations of our country. That's what's up for debate right now. And the answer to that is that it isn't up for debate. We will not entertain that. We're going to crush anyone that wants to fundamentally uproot and destroy our country. And after we've taken our country back, then we can get back to politics as usual. But until that point, which will be decades from now when some of us are dead and the rest of us are old and graying, uh, until that point, it's war. We do not compromise with those who want to destroy us and everything that better men than you and I have died to create and preserve. Hey guys, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, leave it a comment, subscribe to the channel, uh, turn on notifications and hit the bell. The Liberty Bell. It sounds like this. You hear that? It sounds like nothing because that's the sound of a British officer getting his throat opened up with my sword. It's like 2 a.m. Go get that game. That game's fun. It's a fun game. You know what else is fun? America. America's pretty fun. Not recently, but I would say that as a, as a general rule, you know, there's fluctuations, but I would say like on the net, it's, 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 a, it's a good amount of fun. It's a good time. We like it. We want to we want to preserve it and we want to make it great again. It's a pretty good time now, but it could be greater. It's like you go to Cedar Point, you get the, the normal ticket or the fast pass, maybe the fast pass, fast pass plus. First term was fast pass. Now we're going fast pass plus Trump 2020 fast pass plus. Okay. Thank you so much for watching. May God bless America.